Over the past 24 hours, the Russians carried out more than 80 attacks along the entire front line, and Ukrainian defenders hit a Russian command post, a fuel and lubricants depot and five areas where Russian military personnel were concentrated. General Staff of the Armed Forces of Ukraine reported this dot on the Kupiansk front, Ukrainian troops repelled 16 Russian attacks near the settlements of Sinkivka, Pishchain, and Beristov and Stelmakivka. In the Kupiansk direction, the Russian army is being replenished mainly by contract soldiers, Volodymyr Gonter, an officer of the 3rd Separate Tank Iron Brigade, told on the air of the telethon. They are raising their manpower and equipment and continue to put pressure on our positions. Take such actions to determine our places and strengths. In general, they replenish themselves very, very actively. People arrive who are even more prepared than those they hired. They don't count people. They have quite a lot of techniques, that's why they chase, the defender stated according to him, the day in the Kupiansk direction was as tense as the previous ones. At the same time, he noted that the defenders are ready for any development of events, in particular, a possible offensive of the enemy at the end of May, in June. The degree of tension is quite high even compared to the time of our counteroffensive. We are all very focused, Gonter said. Dot on the Avdiivka front, Ukrainian troops repelled 27 attacks near the settlements of Oleksandropil, Novoleksandrivka, Proors, Yevanivka, Novoselivka Prasha, Umansky, and Netilov. On the Novopodlivka front, Ukraine's defense forces are continuing to hold back the Russians near the settlements of Krasnohorivka, Kostantinivka, Vodian, and Urishain, where the Russians tried to break through Ukrainian defenses 11 times. On the Sibirsk China and Slobozhensk China fronts, the Russians maintained a military presence in the border areas, conducted sabotage activities to prevent the deployment of Ukrainian troops to vulnerable areas, and increased the density of minefields along the state border. NATO defined a red line for entering war on Ukraine's side. NATO may directly take part in Russia's war against Ukraine if Russian occupiers break through the Ukrainian armed forces defense line in the northwest of the country or in the event of a military provocation by the Russians against the Baltic countries, Poland or an attack on Moldova. An article in the Italian newspaper La Repubblica states that at the moment the collective Western security bloc has no operational plans that would involve sending troops into Ukraine. However, an assessment is being made of the likelihood of NATO's direct participation in the war if Russia crosses the red lines. The Western world may enter the war in Ukraine with troops if a third party intervenes, for example, in the event of a breakthrough by the invaders in the northwest of the Ukrainian state. This would create a corridor between Ukraine and Belarus. The tactical option has recently been recognized as probable by several allied analysts. Then Minsk would be directly included in the war. Its troops and arsenal would be decisive for Moscow. And their circumstance could only intensify defense in favor of Ukraine, the article states. The second red line in the West is seen as military provocations against the Baltic countries or Poland or a direct attack on Moldova. This is not necessarily an invasion that could happen after the attack on Odessa, but simply a military strike to test the West's reaction, the journalists noted. It is assumed that Russia may try to test the alliance's ability to react in a phase of possible confusion. The chaotic situation refers to the election season in Europe and the United States. The Kremlin may think that NATO is distracted, but the bloc will not tolerate such manifestations of Russian aggression. <laughs> 